when we talk about breaking cycles of violence that usually involves addressing the deep-rooted core issues causing young people to act out. So a group of anti-violence activists in our area were looking forward to a bill that would have taken a step toward reforming juvenile justice, only for it to be rejected by the governor. Too many bullets in our neighborhoods. Heartbreaking scenes like this seen across Central Virginia over the past week. I'm broken. Yes, it hurts to the core. As communities mourn the loss of two young people who recently died at the hands of gun violence. Kids have experienced a lot. Their worlds were upended and they're experiencing trauma. Valerie Slater with the nonprofit Rise for Youth says she's alarmed by a spike in crime among young people, but she's not surprised. We're coming out of a pandemic. And now more than ever, she says children desperately need mental health support, especially those who live in neighborhoods at higher risk of experiencing violence. That's why she supports a shift in oversight of the agency responsible for Virginia's youngest offenders. A 2022 bill that received bipartisan support in the General Assembly aimed to start that process. This was a piece of legislation that was literally going to begin a conversation. By calling for a study into the possible benefits of transferring the Department of Juvenile Justice from the Secretary of Public Safety and Homeland Security to the Secretary of Human and Health Resources, Democratic Delegate Patrick Hope introduced the legislation. Do you think about behavioral health, mental health, substance abuse, those kinds of things are, are areas that they really need support on. Right now, convicted minors in the system already receive support from human and health resources. So by changing supervision, supporters of the bill claim it would eliminate interagency communication barriers. But after passing the House and the Senate, Governor Glenn Youngkin vetoed the measure. My heart dropped. It was a little devastating. And his reasoning why, the governor points to a rise in crime since COVID-19 hit. And in order to keep schools safe, he says youth offenders must be held accountable and given resources to re-enter society. Governor Yunkin says juvenile detention already does that as it stands now. Republican Senator Amanda Chase, who voted against the bill, agrees. We have to make sure that our students are protected and that we don't allow violent student offenders to you know be released back into the school systems a 2021 report by the nonpartisan group jlark that provides oversight to state government operations found the number of youth in virginia's juvenile justice system dropped dramatically over the past 10 years from about 9500 to fewer than 3000 but that same study shows detention centers are ill-equipped with effective rehabilitative programs and they're unlikely to prevent youth from recommitting crimes once released. Slater believes putting all those resources under the same umbrella of health and human resources would make a difference. It would be a true paradigm shift in the way we even view children that are in trouble. And Governor Youngkin adds that a study of the transfer is unnecessary and that if lawmakers want to move the department, they should just introduce legislation directing as such. However, Delegate Hope says he wouldn't feel comfortable without formal research first. Now, there is a chance for the House and the Senate to override the veto, but Hope doesn't believe they'll have just enough votes for that to happen.